Let's together welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. What a great honor. Can you do better, please? Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Let's tell Pastor Shola a big congratulations for that beautiful song. Hallelujah. This church has been owing me Yoruba lessons for over eight years or eight or so years. I need a lesson teacher. I have to take this thing seriously. Praise the name of the Lord. It's so painful to be enjoying the song and I cannot sing along. I mean, I'm not that dull. I need a Yoruba teacher. <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. All right, let's lift our hands to heaven. Give Jesus praise. Give him all the praise. Thank him for that which you'll be doing in our lives. It'll be a very brief session, but that our lives will never be the same. Never be the same. Dave, can you sing that song for me? I, 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 yeah. That's someone's word to me. Someone just receive it as a prophetic word. I touch your grace. My life is changed. I can never be. Oh, I I I Father, give us mighty visitations this morning. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we will step into the experience of restoration. That everything that has been lost in the name of Jesus, let it be restored. Everything that has been stolen, let it be returned. I say it again, everything that has been lost, let it be returned. Everything that has been stolen, let it be restored. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. I'm excited about what you are, you are going to be hearing now because this will finish um, the last phase of what we began discussing yesterday. Let me encourage you again. If for any reason you missed any of the sessions, please do well to get the teachings. Um, so that it will help you build we may not be able to for sake of time go back to recap on yesterday but um we began in the morning teaching on commanding restoration we looked at the power of strategic prayer and then in the evening it was a prophetic service that there shall be no loss i hope you still believe it in the name of jesus christ remind someone who came to church yesterday night that there will still be no loss in the name of Jesus. This morning I want to share with you still on the topic commanding restoration. We're looking at the principles of restoration. I want to show you how restoration happens according to scripture. Praise the name of the Lord. So yesterday I told you that there are four levels of restoration. Number one, there is the restoration of time or years. Number two, there's the restoration of things. Number three, there's the restoration of opportunities. Number four, there's the restoration of people 
or men. Every time you see restoration in the Bible, it attends to these four categories. I recap again. Number one, restoration of time or years. It says, I will restore to you the years. Number two, restoration of things. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? And the axe head returned again. Number three, restoration of opportunities by this time tomorrow that the land of Samaria would experience an opportunity that they never had hitherto. And then restoration of people. And God restored to Job. He restored Job back to that status. Are we together now? I'm saying this because if you've been affected in any of these or all these areas, then this morning is your service. In the name of Jesus Christ. Three scriptures very quickly. First Samuel 30 and verse 8. Receive it, not just as a reading of the word, but as a prophetic word for you this morning. First Samuel 30 and 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered them like he's answering someone in church today. Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. A believer shout amen. amen it says and without fail recover all second scripture second kings chapter 8 please from verse 1 this is a very profound scripture and then elisha said unto the woman whose son has been restored back to life remember the story yes the woman in shunem arise and go thou and thine household and sir john wheresoever thou canst sir john for the Lord had called for a famine and it shall come upon the land seven years. Follow the story carefully. Most believers do not even know this story. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. We're reading to six. And it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. Verse 4. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha had done. Listen now. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son had restored to life cried unto the king for her house and for her land and Gehazi said my lord O king this is the woman and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life now watch her own restoration read it as a prophetic word one to go so the king appointed unto her a certain officer saying Restore all that was hers and all the fruit of the field since the day she left the land, even until now. Restore, restore. This is a word for someone. From the day she left the land, for all that seven years, the king said, restore everything. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready for one more scripture? Amos chapter 9 and verse 14. Amos chapter 9 and verse 14. Read it again with me and then I'll begin to teach. One, two, go. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof and they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. May the Lord bless the readings of his word in Jesus' name. There are keys like you may have learned in the course of this conference that every spiritual outcome captured as our benefits in this kingdom has a body of spiritual truth that controls the result. You see, remember that every outcome in the kingdom is knowledge dependent. There is what you must know, there is what you must understand, and there is what you must engage. There is what you must know, there is what you must understand. And there is what you must engage knowledge is a constructive collation of truth useful information 
understanding is a comprehension of those truths wisdom is a strategic application of those truths so that it delivers to profit you do you understand now so you can have knowledge but lack understanding and lack wisdom wisdom is knowledge dependent you cannot have wisdom until you first have knowledge so knowledge is a constructive collation of truth understanding is a comprehension of the working dynamics then wisdom is a strategic application of those truths so that they deliver unto you hallelujah so i want to share with you biblical principles now this is a morning service so i have to work with the time um else i would have taught you a principle that generally when you want to study any body of knowledge you have to go to the bible and let the bible reveal its own strategy you don't try to invent a strategy to get god's result the bible says the things that are written are for time whether as stories as parables as events within those stories are mysteries this is the assignment of revelation to draw truth out of stories to draw truth out of mysteries are we together that they are written at four times so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope there are a number of stories in the bible that help us understand the principles connected to restoration an example is what we read with the woman the, the woman in shunem another example is that of the prodigal son remember the story the story of the prodigal son is a classic demonstration of restoration then you also find in Luke's synoptic account uh, the woman who lost her coin she had 10 coins she lost one and she found that one so when you study all these scriptures through the lens of revelation you draw forth relevant lessons and this is what we are going to be examining very very quickly number one the first key that controls restoration is called the power of self-examination write that down please the power of self-examination luke chapter 15 we read we just spoke about that let's go to 17 and read to 20 how the prodigal son was restored the bible says and when he came to himself and when he came to himself the bible never said and when the holy ghost spoke to him the bible never said when an advisor came to him men can come to themselves it's called the power of self-examination you will never experience restoration until you take the time to ponder carefully where did i miss this out self-examination is very powerful proverbs 18 and verse 1 the bible says true desire a man any man having separated himself he says that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom true desire there are many people who cannot receive restoration because they've not found the time to sit down and honestly assess critique and appraise their life even their current conditions are we together so let's go back to um luke 15 okay 17 now when he came to himself watch this he was talking with himself he said how many hired servants as my father of my father's house have bread enough to eat and to spare and i perish with hunger verse 18 he says i will arise he's speaking to himself this is the power of self-examination i will arise and i will go to my father and say unto him father i have sinned against heaven and before thee verse 9 verse 19 and i am no more worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your hired servants and he arose he did what he said he would do and the bible says but while he was a great way off the father saw him and had compassion ran fell on his neck and kissed him self-examination the bible also tells us that he that breaks the hedge have you read that scripture that the serpent will strike and like we discussed yesterday the various factors that are responsible for losses one of it is lack of discernment one of it is carelessness negligence and so when you take the time to examine how come this tragedy came upon me could it be that i lost discernment could it be that this and that happened was i careless did i trust people too early take the time to examine yourself are we together 
In fact, the Bible says it in, I think, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, that we should examine ourselves whether we are still in the faith. So self-examination. Are you learning already? Number two, the second key that controls restoration is called brokenness. 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 Psalm 51, verse 17. This is called a, a psalm that communicates mercy. When you want to study a broken man, read the entire Psalm 51. This was David crying before the Lord, opening up his heart. Are we together now? You know the story. When the prophet came and convicted him using a parable and said, this is your life, this is what you have done. He documented his repentance in Psalm 51. And he said, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Then he says, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. When you are in trouble and you are still proud, you remain there. There are many people who are in trouble and even in the midst of obvious situations, they've made mistakes, they've wrecked their lives, they've wasted opportunities, they still stand tall and in pride and yet they want deliverance. One thing I can tell you about God is that his mercy is lavish but it is never wasted. The mercy of God only comes towards a life that is broken and contrite. Brokenness demands taking responsibility that you must see how you contributed to that trouble. Once you keep pointing your hands, blaming boss, blaming husband, blaming wife. For instance, I teach my people that your belief system is your contribution to your failure or your success. So when you are pointing at people and saying this and that, Nigeria is my problem, maybe you may be sincere, my father is my problem, the moment you are not broken, I tell you, you will never access the mercy of God. David, I wish we had the time to read from verse 1 down to 17. You would see how, I mean, he was not embarrassed. He didn't give excuses. He poured his heart. He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. He began to cry unto the Lord. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. He is nigh them who are of a broken spirit. Jesus was giving a parable and he spoke about two people who went to the temple to pray. And the other one lifted up his voice and in pride he was saying, I give alms, I do this and that. And the other person was broken before God. And Jesus said, which of these two do you think the prayer would be answered? Many people are not yet ready for a change because they are still giving excuses, explanations and walking in pride. Hallelujah. If there is something I have learned about God through the years, is that God will never turn away from a broken person. There were two thieves on the cross. All of them had an opportunity as a last chance to remedy their lives. One of the thieves was there bragging and speaking foolishly about Jesus. And the other one rebuked him and paraphrasing, he said, we are here for something we did that was wrong. This man was innocent. And even though Jesus was on the cross in pain, he turned to the one who was broken and said, today, not next week, you will be with me in paradise. A broken and a contrite heart. For someone, this is a prophetic word for you. All that God is waiting for is brokenness. That you return back and get on your knees and say, Lord, I confess that prayerlessness was part of the reason why demons had access to even attack me. I confess that I was careless. I confess that I got into relationships that misled me and made church look like a nuisance. And I broke the hedge and the devil struck. The moment you are open before God, even if you don't know the way out, when God finds you at the point of brokenness, he says below the cherubim, above the mercy seat, there will I meet with you and I will speak with you face to face. There is a place God meets men at the mercy seat, the place where you are broken. Who is learning this morning? Yes. For as long as you continue to give flimsy excuses, you know, look at my uncle, oh God, you are now praying, oh, this man has money, he helps somebody in my presence. 
can you imagine oh god you are still praying what sort of a wicked man this is you are not the uncle is not the one suffering you are the one who has not paid your rent you are the one who is in trouble and for as long as you are pointing and getting angry and you know no i come before you oh god i confess that i may not know enough to have brought me this miracle i take responsibility as a father i've not been able to pay the school fees of my children I, I, I have to stop blaming the job I lost 10 years ago. Uh -uh. 10 years is too long a time to not have experienced breakthrough. I take responsibility. The Bible says, when I came to the house of God, then understood I. Many conferences have happened with graces that have been released within those 10 years to have corrected that problem. A broken and a contrite heart. I hope we're still friends. You have to believe this this is a major key to experiencing restoration most people pray but they pray from a standpoint of pride lord i'm still waiting there's nothing i can do you are savior you created me else if i could see you i would you know there are many people if they could see the lord now they would punch him and beat him and say why did you waste my time and yet they are crying for mercy someone shout mercy say it again say mercy a broken and a contrite heart I have seen God turn the tides over people, not necessarily because they had sufficient spiritual intelligence. They were so broken, it became unfair for God to leave them in that condition. The prodigal son said to himself, how many hired servants took responsibility and said, I will arise. I'm not going to ask the father to be a son. I know that I've lost my chance as a son. Take me as one of the servants, no problem. Do you know that in that state, when he met the father, the father never spoke to him. Where have you been? Where did you go? The brokenness was already enough. Are we together? Thank you, Jesus. So number one, self-examination. Number two, brokenness. Who is following so far? Let's see something that happened from verse 21. Luke chapter... 15 from verse 21 i like to teach a lot on subjects of surrender mercy brokenness i guess maybe it's because of the way god trained me and the way god helped me in life uh, i'm not somebody who had the best of opportunities i am a direct product of god's mercy i know what it means to be shown mercy in life in ministry in destiny so when people brag over a lot of things i stand shocked and surprised because i know where he brought me from are we together now and it still remains my disposition it is one secret i can tell you that brings longevity of impact to remain broken one of my dear people sang a house song just recently about the mercy of god and it was a song that impacted me so much can i sing it for you are you interested? Yes. Now is your turn. Yes. Meirama. Jiadu wata. Banda wani sekai. Yes. Meirama. Gahawayena. Let me interpret that for you. It means Jesus, the merciful one. Hear my prayer. I have no one but you. Jesus, the merciful one. See my tears. I have no one but you. It's a prayer of genuine brokenness, surrender. There's a, it is music to the ears of the father when you come to a point where you tell him lord in this lagos i don't have any other person that if there's anything i know about god is that his jealousy will not allow him to contend with any other thing that takes his place provided you still have plan b god will be patient he will allow you to exhaust all your options in pride that is why the earlier you are broken the quicker your miracle you can cause a miracle that should happen in one day to happen in 10 years because you keep exploring the options and God becomes patient until the day you get to a point where you see that there is no other God beside him. 
Is someone learning? In one minute, I'd like you to turn this prayer, turn it into prayer. Lord, I stand broken before you. To be broken does not mean to be condemned. To be broken means to come to a point of awareness. Someone pray. Maybe you are a businessman and things have not been working. Don't give excuses with all due respect. Stand broken before the Lord. There is an explanation as to why things are not happening. There is an explanation as to why things are not working. Take a minute to pray. Take a minute to pray. Open up yourself before God. Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ brokenness number three let's hurry up the third key that controls restoration according to scripture is that you must contend for a higher level of knowledge a higher level of knowledge a higher level of knowledge I told us something yesterday that losses sometimes are letters from your future to you saying I am there but this version of you cannot come there is someone learning now that sometimes losses setbacks pain are proof that your knowledge has exhausted its relevance by bringing you thus far that that current level of knowledge cannot take you further maybe in business maybe in ministry when you have exhausted the level of knowledge you have it has exhausted its delivery you will need higher life to continue so many times losses are a letter from your future to your today saying i am there only in prophecy this level of knowledge cannot take you to where you need to go so you contend for higher levels of knowledge the Bible says in Proverbs 11 and verse 9, the B part says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Not through assumption. Through knowledge shall the just. Even though you are the just, it takes knowledge to command your portion. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 is a scripture that has become instructive to me as a man of God and as a believer. Let's read together. Ready? One to go. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, the Bible says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. There is a standard of knowledge that connects to every dimension of results. Hallelujah. You cannot have 1,000 naira worth of knowledge and want a million naira worth of results. It doesn't work that way. Are we together now? Yeah. There are many of us, you are not in ignorance, but the truth is that your knowledge bank is too small with respect to the results you desire. Knowledge. By the truth. By the truth. I preached a message years ago in Ghana called By the Truth. And I said there are currencies that you use to buy the truth. The truth is free but it's not cheap. Let me give you some currencies that you use to buy the truth. Number one is hunger. Hunger is a currency you use to buy the truth. Number two, humility. Meekness, it is called. You use meekness. Number three, patience. Patience. You cannot want the truth at your own terms. A wise man will say adaptation is proof of honor. The ability to bend over backwards for the sake of the knowledge that you desire buy the truth and sell it not buy the truth and sell it not who is learning so you need knowledge after this conference do not shut down just because the conference is over for some of you at the end of this conference go and search for relevant materials your finances is not working now that you are broken you've taken responsibility 
go and buy materials go online and search for scripture based materials that relates to the issue of concern you are having health troubles your health is swinging from pillar to post don't give us some don't give flimsy excuses go and search for materials and the beautiful thing is that the world that we live in today knowledge has been distilled it's already there just for you to take someone has already done the labor for you are we together now yeah. there are three areas that i've seen especially from last year to this year that is a major concern for believers number one areas of finances most believers are struggling in the area of finances number two areas of health health there it seems to me like hell has just released some kinds of diseases that medicine cannot seem to diagnose someone will tell you he's sick the machines are saying he's fine and yet you can see that the person is sick so this is an area we need to build knowledge higher levels of spiritual knowledge number three is in the area of establishing victory over demonic forces these three areas any believer that does not deal with it you will live a defeated life let me repeat it again areas of your finances i thank god for the balance teaching that comes here i am one man of god who is very unapologetic about the relevance of finance in your advancement and in the project of kingdom come if you are poor there are many things that will suffer first you then everybody connected to you then ultimately god's program are we together yes number two the area of your health a body has thou prepared for me every believer is given the privilege of being hosted in one body per lifetime one body per lifetime and if you allow that body to deteriorate beyond a certain threshold whether it is your time or not there will be a separation between your body and that spirit and because the devil knows that that there is a health requirement your body must have he will afflict you afflict you with mysterious diseases high blood pressure used to be for people maybe from 50 years and above now you find teenagers having high blood pressure he's not paying school fees he's not doing anything and he's not even thinking yet he has high blood pressure come on now i rebuke if there is anybody here under the sound of my voice carrying any strange sickness within your body whether it was an inheritance like father like son in the name of jesus christ you are healed right now in the name of jesus christ you are delivered right now are we together knowledge find out what is not working and make it work the first kind of knowledge is the knowledge to find out what is not working do you know knowing what your problem is is half the problem solved it's true when you do not even know what the problem is you are in trouble the first thing a consultant would do is to diagnose situations am i right on that you cannot solve a problem that when you've not diagnosed it So the doctor tells you what is wrong with you well i have headache stomach pain i can't sleep and he says oh really when did that start oh this and that did your father have that kind of thing exactly doctor it's as if you are prophesying my grandfather too had it says, ah okay i see so there is a trace of this in your family okay how old are you now i'm only 20 years we we'll have to start dealing with this issue now only that when you come to church we don't care whether it was your great grandfather your father god gave us the power not to sympathize with you but to bring that situation to an end i'm saying it again if there is any pattern you have seen in your life that is inconsistent don't wait until it deteriorates and destroys your life i declare that it comes to an end now hallelujah I came from a family where I saw a lot of my uncles die before their time. Now, this is true. I mean, they didn't get to a certain age and mysteriously, and the way that I saw that they died was not good. None of them died honorably. They died in pain. They died, you know, in, in a way that, and I said, no, that I came from that family does not mean I must share in that pain. 
have been called out of every tribe every tongue every nation i have the ability with god to define my possibilities are we together now yeah. and because i knew that i would be in ministry traveling around troubling demons every day i said i better sort this issue of knowledge now so that i don't become a casualty to myself for someone god is asking you you need to leave the realm of pray for me pray for me go and get a book and sit down don't say i'm not a prayer warrior nobody was born a prayer warrior they say necessity is the mother of um, whatever is pursuing you determines the seriousness that you put in there are we together now yeah my life can't be like this i came from a poor family I watched my father live a poor life. My grandfather live a poor life. Now everybody, 10 graduates, nobody has a job. Go and get material. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Lord, where is my own provision? The Bible says the increase of the earth is for all, not some, all. That even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. Lord, you are a God of portions. Where is my portion? Give me this day my daily bread. And you open up a book. As you are committing yourself there. You are signing out of certain realms. I tell you. The day you get angry enough. Even the devil will leave you. Someone say knowledge. Say it again. Say knowledge. So my, 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 my charge to you is that after this conference please do not shut down as far as your press towards knowledge is concerned buy books get tapes get the conference materials get materials that attend to the area of concern deal with the area of concern first then you can deal with the areas you need to improve on are we together if you are sick and you are almost dying, don't go and read about, about parenting. It's only when you are alive that you can be a parent. Leave the material for parenting and get yourself back to life. Today you go to the hospital, they say you are AA. Tomorrow they say you are AS. Next tomorrow they say you are even SS. And you check, how, what is wrong? Every part of me, am I, am I, am I carrying multiple spirits? I need to go back father in the name of Jesus this is a demonic thing this is the spirit of death trying to run through my blood I take authority over it I am one with Christ you are divine I am the branch in the name of Jesus I define my possibilities do you believe this number four what is the fourth key to experiencing restoration Number one, being self-examination. Two, brokenness. Three, contend for higher levels of knowledge. Number four, you must pray the prayers of restoration. There's something called the prayer of restoration. Psalm 34, verse 17. Please give it to us. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Can we read it together? One to read. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth. And delivered them out of how many? Please talk to me. Out of how many? One more time. It says the righteous cry. Everyone can cry. But when the righteous cry, it says the Lord hears and he delivers them out of all their troubles. Blind Bartimeo on hearing that Jesus was passing, he said, I will not lose this opportunity and truthfully, that was the last time Jesus would be passing around Jericho. Thou son of David, he said. Don't ask me whether I'm praying correctly or not. At least he's hearing me. Have mercy on me. And he shouted the more. The people said, keep quiet. Don't distract him. He's tired. And he shouted the more. And when Jesus heard that, he remembered that a broken and a contrite heart he would not despise. He said, what do I do? Ah, he said that I may receive my sight. That I may receive my sight. The prayer of restoration. There are mothers here who need to go and hold on to the horns of the altar. Pray the prayer of restoration. There are fathers who need to pray. There are children who need to pray. There are people who need to pray. Father, 
I, I've, I've, I've been a graduate for 15 years. I've not had my first job. I'm not looking for progress. I need restoration first. It is when restoration happens, then progress can continue. Because by that 15 years, if you had gotten a good job, many things would have gone forward in your life. Are we together now? It's not only money you lost as a result of not having a job. You've lost time. Are we together now? If you are employed in the civil service, you will start from whatever level there. And oh my God, with the sentiments and prejudices and politics that happen, when will you ever rise? It means you will not build one house in your lifetime till you retire. And I will restore the years. But I will only restore to the person who sees the need to cry unto me. To cry unto me. He said, call unto me and I will answer. Call unto me and I will answer. Someone needs to pray the prayer of restoration. Father, from COVID till now, my business has gone down. From COVID till now, my company that used to be an envy to many has now become a subject of, rest, of, 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 of ridicule. This is not how you lift men. Your word says the path of the just, regardless COVID, should be as a shining light that shines more and more. I have not seen more and more to my life. Are we together? The Bible says, bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasons. You get angry in your spirit and you go to the place of prayer. Add it with fasting. Turn the plates on your house upside down and cry unto God. Cry unto God. A mother needs to cry unto God for the restoration of her son. I get back to a child you told me will become a prophet. At 14, he's already an arm robber. Lord, restore. I can't continue like this. My womb will not carry an arm robber in the name of Jesus. One police station, DSS is picking him, VIO is picking him because he's hit somebody's car and you are a parent because you gave birth, you have high blood pressure. Let me tell you, anything you don't deal with, you have given it authorization to remain in your life. Who is learning this morning? As a principle, I don't tolerate once I see anything that is inconsistent with the speakings of God. It, be it becomes my prayer project immediately. I shared with you Acts chapter 2. Remember? Acts chapter 12. We don't have the time there, but the Bible says that Herod was determined to vex certain Jews. They caught James and they beheaded him. The Bible says the church kept quiet. And when he saw verse 3, he saw that it pleased the Jews. He proceeded further. Satan brought headache to the family. You kept quiet and said, I think it's just because the weather condition. He proceeded further. Every time the saints keep quiet, you authorize darkness to proceed further. A little loss in the business. Oh, I just lost 50 million. It's, it's nothing so much. I'm, I'm still doing well. And the realm of the spirit says, beautiful. This is what we want. From 50 million, they freeze the other account. Then the plot will be to destroy every other thing. The Bible says in verse 5, Acts chapter 12, when he proceeded further to now catch Peter, he says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. The church said, we will not keep quiet again. James was killed. And I hope you know that Satan was looking for the people that were with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. It was not everybody. Peter, James, and John. He killed James. Caught Peter. Eventually, he would have killed John. Satan attacks with wisdom. When he's looking for you and your first child and your wife, he has seen a formation in the spirit. These are the prayer warriors that protect you. They are the ones who pray over your business. And if he can get them out of the way, he knows the role that your wife is playing in making your business continue. He will attack her health and bring her to the point of silence. The goal is not your wife. The goal is to finish the family. But he has traced and he has seen that there is a woman who wakes up every night laying her hands on her womb, calling her children by name and say, my husband will not fail. My children will not fail. When the young boy is about to roam around somewhere on campus, the mother's prayer will drive him back to the place and Satan says, this is how I will attack this family. Let's start with the woman, the greatest spiritual voice. Attack 
her, bring her to the point of silence. Use offense, use bitterness, cause trouble between her and her husband so that without peace, she will not have the liberty to pray. It's not about the trouble in your house. There is a bigger goal. Have discernment to see. Satan does not attack anything for the sake of that thing. It is always a gateway to a bigger havoc. When Satan attacks your health, it's not your being sick that is his concern. When Satan attacks a man of God, he's attacking the members, not the man of God. Rather than attacking 2,000 people, he will attack one person who is responsible for feeding them spiritually. Who is learning? You must learn to pray and to pray the prayer of restoration. Take a minute right now and cry and say, Oh God, restore me. Restore me. Mention the areas in your life you need restoration. Please don't keep quiet. 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 I release my faith with you. Is it in business? Pray. Is it in ministry? Pray. Some of you have even lost your bishopric. There was an investment of the spirit upon your life and now it looks like nothing is there dry spiritually someone pray don't be silent one minute you are praying restore relationships oh god restore opportunities oh god you are taking a minute to pray father there was a relationship you brought to my life that lifted me financially an attack came on that relationship now i've been left to beg restore 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 the ministry of destiny help us restore my prayer life restore the grace to fast restore the grace to study restore everything that was lost Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore. You will restore. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore, you will restore. Hallelujah. Job chapter 42 and verse 10. Halana Makata. Honestly, I sense that God is restoring. I, I sense this in my heart. I sense this. There is a lady God is saying, I should tell you that He's restoring relationships relationship i mean marriage relationships restoring relationships it looks like there is a demonic embargo upon you every time good people come help that lady please i curse that spirit right now in the name of jesus christ that god is able to restore every time good people come it looks like something just happens they call evil good and they call good evil do you know there are people like that? You are the best and the brightest of the staff, but you are never rewarded. When the reward comes, they give someone else while you are the one laboring. Someone shout restore. Shout it again, say restore. Shout it again, say restore. Shout it again, say restore. NIV please. Job 42 and verse 10. The Bible says, after Job had prayed for his friends, read the remaining part with me, please. 
the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice. Ah, the Lord restored. Businessman, the Lord restored. The Lord restored. We are not yet in December. Who told you God cannot arise? Ah, who told you God cannot arise? I don't know about your God, but my God is able to arise. Take away shame to take away reproach. Take away shame, take away reproach. That when the Lord turn again, the captivity of Zion, the captivity of Zion, like he turned the captivity of household of David in a matter of months, God restored. Someone shout again, restore. Say it again, restore. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore, you will restore. My God will restore. You will restore. For someone you may not know that you are only days away from restoration. Only days. If Joseph ever knew that that night was his last night as a prisoner, I'm sure he would be dancing in the prison. Because there are some of you in the name of Jesus, the king will soon send for you. The king will soon send for you. Now let me tell you this. It is a secret I have found. Every time God wanted to demonstrate restoration, he used the stories of women and men, but they went to kings for their restoration. The Bible seemed to connect restoration to people, kings who had capacity. The woman that we read about, she went to the king. It was only he who could restore her. Who else would restore her? Joseph, Pharaoh, in Luke chapter 18, avenge me my adversary. The woman went to that judge. Are we together now? Kings. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph. Not everyone can be used to bring you restoration. Restoration is engendered when you encounter men of capacity. Capacity. Those who have the wherewithal, whether financially and the influence. I'm saying this so you don't just say, Lord, let men come. It is not every man that is needed in your life at this point. There are certain men that can be used by God to engender restoration. And I pray for you already. Whoever has been anointed and assigned by God as a tool to help restore your business, to help restore your destiny, may the God of all grace gravitate them towards your life gravitates them towards your destiny gravitates them towards your life gravitates them towards your destiny in the name of Jesus please be seated the prayer of restoration I will give you the last key now and then we'll pray I still sense in my spirit that there is an anointing for restoration it's, it's a Nehemiah anointing an anointing to rebuild again to rebuild broken walls broken walls who believes this to rebuild broken walls to rebuild broken destinies ah rejoice not over me my enemies that whilst you are laughing at Jesus who died he died for only three days verify if he's still in the grave they are laughing at the one who failed in January but this is September. They are not aware you came for a conference and that God is already doing a quick walk, a quick walk, a quick walk, a quick walk in your destiny, a quick walk in your destiny. He will restore regardless the damage. 
my God will restore. Hallelujah. Let me give you the last key. The last key that controls the manifestation of restoration is called engaging the prophetic. Engaging the prophetic. Please lend me your attention now. <laughs> engaging the prophetic. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 22. Hmm. Let's read together. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. Read with me. And they are hid in prison houses. Uh -huh. They are for a prey and none deliver it. For a spoil and none say it. Restore. When you are in that prison, you are not the one sometimes who can say restore. It will take someone who is not there to advocate your restoration. Are we together? The person who brought Joseph out of prison was not in prison. I have never seen where a heavily pregnant woman is helping another pregnant woman to deliver. No. It's usually the one who is free and not pregnant yet that has the energy to help you. Is that true? Yeah. The Bible says to comfort others with the same comfort that you have received. You have received. In bondage, you cannot help somebody who is an, in another bondage. You can agree that God will help two of you. But you are only a deliverer when you are delivered. Who is learning this now? Let me tell you the truth. Challenges are not generic. There are people by mercy, by wisdom, and by the help of God. They have come out far beyond the grip of certain things. When they, when they sympathize, it's just a generic sympathy. But such obstacles cannot come near their circumference again. Light has elevated them beyond certain dimensions. Now, let me tell you what happens. When a man goes through a season with God, at the point of deliverance, you live with two things. One, your testimony. Two, an anointing to bring others out. I want to listen. If it is God that brings deliverance to anyone. So for instance, a woman who has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb, say for 10 years, and she's been praying, fasting, engaging the keys. If that woman actually gets pregnant by God, at her point of delivery, there are two things she has access to. Most people focus on one. She has her miracle child. But with that miracle child, through her pain, like squeezing oil, there is oil, squeezing olive to get oil. There is an anointing upon that woman. Any woman she prays for, for the fruit of the womb, with understanding, that woman will return with a testimony. Now, whether she recognizes and uses that grace or not, it's a law in the spirit. That is the reason why for Jesus to be a deliverer, he went through. He didn't speak from heaven as God. No, it's a law. He had to become what he wants to save and go through. Then he earned the right. That's why he said, worthy is the lamb. Worthy, not merciful. Worthy, deserving, qualified. Let me tell you the truth. There are times you go through certain challenges in life. It is not for your sake. It is for the sake of the people you will rescue. Hmm. Who is learning? Yes, sir. So by the time you come out of it, you come out with an anointing. Someone will come to you and say, I'm in debt. I'm owing one billion and you just laugh. You say, my friend, let me tell you something you don't know. I owed 50 billion and I did not even know whether I was dead or alive because of stress and pain. Have you eaten? You tell the person, eat first while we are talking. About you don't know the tricep, my friend. Just don't worry about that. Because there is grace. You comfort others with the same comfort. Let me tell you, it is a powerful comfort enough to meet someone who has triumphed over what is now giving you tears. If someone comes here now and says, Ah, my house caught fire. My life is over. Any member here will say, Sit down, my friend. Just don't, don't worry. Sit down. You know why? Because you have gone through a season. And with that season, you have grace to metal comfort to others. 
your mother raised 10 of you as a single woman if someone comes to say my uncle has lost his job the wife has lost the job you say please sit down i have a story to tell you then you tell the person story story listen to my story you see that old uneducated woman she raised 10 of us i know what favor is kneel down and receive that grace don't waste your pain there is an anointing following that pain you believe what you're hearing don't waste your pain but let me talk about the prophetic we're wrapping up They are taken for a prey and none say yet restore. The woman whose husband was a prophet and died, he left the woman in debt. Now, I don't know what kind of man that was. The fact that he was a prophet, we need to really investigate him because the Bible tells us there is wine and oil to be desired in the house of the wise. And if that man was truly a prophet, it means something went wrong. Something went wrong. Anyway, the woman found herself in that situation. All the treasure in her house had disappeared, but there was still oil. And she did not pay attention to it. And she went to meet the prophet, wise woman. Sir, I'm in trouble. My husband honored you. My husband loved you. Now they're about to take my children as collateral and the prophet said no don't worry what do you have in your house he said nothing except a little cruise of oil he said that's right truly your husband was a prophet because if he was a prophet a custodian of God's wisdom even when there is no treasure there must be oil two things you find anywhere wisdom is you find treasure and you find oil the treasure may disappear as a job, as a business. But if the wisdom of God resides with you, check that house. There is still oil. The oil will restore every treasure. Is someone learning now? That's what the Bible means when it says there is oil. There is treasure to be desired. And oftentimes you keep the treasure in a safe. But the oil, you usually keep it in one kind of bottle that only you knows there's oil there. Say so nothing except... And then the man, I used to think that the only miracle Elisha performed was speaking over her that the oil multiplied. No, those that bought the oil came by prophecy. She would have had the oil. But he said, go and buy. Now he said, go and sell. That instruction programmed helpers. As soon as she came out with the oil, they said, where are you? We've been looking for you. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you how the prophetic works. The prophetic is very powerful. So when a prophetic word comes, if I speak to this lady or this gentleman and I say in the name of Jesus, may the Lord favor you. Let me show you the dynamics. Watch this. If that word is inspired of God, as soon as I make that pronouncement, listen please, the spirit of wisdom moves across that defined territory and begins to source for the human vessels who must partner with that word it will happen through a series of coincidences you call it however there is intelligence going on are we together now so the prophet says by this time tomorrow and the, i don't think god intended to use lepers it was only lepers who were available the spirit of wisdom went round the entire land and every other person was already discouraged but he went to breathe upon four lepers and they just began to feel they thought they just began to feel not knowing that the anointing was at work in them why sit we here till we die let us get up the same way a prophetic word can come and you can feel like registering the company you are not just feeling it's the anointing because it's about to connect you to a helper and it's like there is an urgency you can't wait for tomorrow to run to get a lawyer it, let me tell you the truth it is God who is at work in us but to will he puts the desire there hallelujah so the spirit of wisdom moves around that territory when it comes to you and you reject that partnership God will respect you he will keep looking for someone 
So he came to Mary because there was a prophetic word that Jesus must come. And he said, Mary, you found favor with God. You've been uniquely selected to midwife that role that makes the word become flesh. Are you willing? And she said, hold on. I'm a woman, not known a man. You have to explain to me. How shall these things be? And the angel took time to explain to her. She said, be it unto me. That was it. If she said, well, I've had your proposal. Carry your nonsense and go out of my window. There would have been another person, not Mary. Because the prophecy never said Mary. It said a virgin. Anyone shall conceive. The same way when a prophetic word comes, it keeps going around like rain. Whoever brings a bucket, you can sit in disbelief. Will it really work? It will leave you come back next conference if you have the faith enough but for someone who can receive it with childlike faith and say lord i believe i believe i believe i despise not prophesying i believe hallelujah ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 we're about to pray i like us to please read it as loud as you can it's a long read but be patient. I'll ask you to stop somewhere. Are you ready? One to read. And they prospered. Help me. Through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and they finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. Stop there. God gave the command and yet nothing happened. But the day two prophets showed up. They said you're about to build hold on before you put the first block you waste your time that building does not just happen through skill to construct the bible says they prospered through the prophesying so while they were building while they were doing the business while they were negotiating the contract there was a prophet behind saying let it work we declare angels on assignment unbelievers know this when they're about to negotiate serious businesses, they can ship people from out. You know what I'm talking about. They can ship people from overseas. Come and camp them in their house. The man does not mind evacuating his bedroom and say, Mr. Man, whoever you are, diviner, stay here. Make the enchantment while I go to the business place. And he enters with such audacity and confidence, speaking nonsense, clueless about the project. But his confidence is that he's submitting his proposal plus an advantage in the spirit. And all those who are there, if they are not saved, they are helplessly under the influence of those spirits. How do you think Pharaoh allowed the nation of Israel to go? You think he was in his mind? No! He came under the influence of the spirit of God and acted like a madman. That's why when they left, he said, what has happened? Pursue them back. I don't even know what happened to me. This is how help has come. They don't come. They are sent. They are sent. The world is too wicked for men to just want to help you. No. Are we together? We are going to pray for one minute. And then I will speak over your life. And I pray that somebody will be open to receive. It is by the election of grace. They build it and they prosper through the prophesying. There are many of you businessmen. The truth is that with the, with the kind of competence you have, you should be doing business at a transcontinental level. That is the truth. But you see, you need more than just the human connections. It is men who will tell you, come to my office tomorrow. And the person wakes up tomorrow and says, I can't remember saying you should come. Men for you. Is someone learning now? In the next two minutes, I'd like you to find a praying neighbor and provoke restoration by praying. Find a praying neighbor and provoke restoration. Come on, someone pray. Shana.
Take two minutes to pray. It's a new season. It's a new season. New season. Ali kaparanta kapra katapa lekapa. Shata kapres kapara katose prekate. I declare, I declare, I declare, I declare in the name of Jesus. Klato shali kapa restoration. Mention the areas. Restoration. Mention the areas. If it's your health, restoration to my body. If it's your finances, I command restoration. If you've been unjustly treated. I like you to declare in my place of work, may the Lord restore, may the Lord restore, may the Lord restore, may the Lord restore. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to share with you a scripture the Lord showed me some years ago, and that scripture changed my life. As touching restoration Nehemiah chapter 5 please from verse 11 and 12 Nehemiah chapter 5 please give us NIV Halina Sopra Caparandos let's read King James or Amplified then we can do NIV you are going to you are going to shout it are you ready now one to go there are fields there are vineyards there are olive groups there are houses and also a hundred part of the money the grain the new wine and the oil that you are lending them then they said we will give it back and not require anything from them now go to kjv Let's read KJV, just verse 11. This is what God is saying. One to go. Restore. He mentioned everything. Restore. You're going to turn this to prayer every area mention it lord i declare restoration by the power of the holy ghost a believer is praying take a minute to pray restore this day my finances let there be restoration we challenge every force of darkness every orchestrations of disfavor restore restore Restore. 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 One more minute you are praying. Restore. My children. Restore. The joy of salvation. Restore my influence hallelujah in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Ezekiel 37 
and verse 7 I prophesied as I was commanded I want to speak over your life now so I prophesied he says as I was commanded and as I prophesied he said there was a noise there was a sound there was a sound there was a sound Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen in the name of Jesus Christ. Please listen. Every opportunity you lost from January till now in the name that is above all names I decree and declare before the end of September may the God of all grace bring back those opportunities bring back those opportunities bring back those opportunities by mercy and by grace may he bring back those opportunities May he bring back those opportunities. May he bring back those opportunities. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you who have lost money, I don't care how it went, whether a bad investment, lost money, houses, properties, anything physical, I decree and declare the wisdom that brings it back in multiplied dimensions may it be released upon you now. 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 Hallelujah. In John chapter 11, when Lazarus died, Jesus arrived supposedly late and Martha cried. She said, if you were here, my brother would not have died. But she made a profound statement. She said, but I know that even now, even now, if you are here by January as a board member or as a director, I know you would not have allowed them to take me out of that job. But even now, there is nothing too late with God. God does not wait for seasons. When he comes, he defines the seasons. The angel came to steer the water once a year. If you were late, sorry for you. But when Jesus came, that was the season. Are we together now? I want to speak over your life. In the name that is above all names. And I pray this from the depth of my heart. Every season that has passed you. It was rainy season but you could not discern. So you didn't sow. And now it's dry season and it's telling on you. The dream of Pharaoh is now telling on you. Maybe rainy season was when you were younger, 10 years younger, 20 years younger. There are investments you would have made. There are steps you would have taken. Now you have entered a dry season. You may have retired. I pray for you. May the God who controls seasons schedule a new season for you now. Schedule a new season for you now. Schedule a new season for you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Samson was a great warrior. But something happened in his life. And he gave himself cheaply. And under the influence of Delilah. The source, the covenant, the consecration that protected his anointing. Was tampered with. And he got up. Samson who was a warrior who could remove a gate was now reduced to someone the first thing they plucked out 
after his hair was his eyes. Yet, when Samson stood, you see, there is a revelation here. Only a foolish architect will put the pillars that support a house on the stage. No. Pillars are not put there. Pillars are supposed to be put strategically. But they put the pillar there. That was what was holding the building. And Samson laid his hands and said, God, I am broken. I know that I wasted my opportunity, but this one time. And while the hair was growing, the people were distracted in pride. And the Bible says, Samson pushed once. I'm about to pray for someone. You lost your hair. You lost your growling through carelessness. And while they are laughing at you and mocking your God, they are not seeing your prayer and your fasting and your repentance. I pray for you. This one push that you will be pushing from September to December, you will, you will rot triumph and victory that is 10 years worth. 10 years worth. 10 years worth. 10 years worth of victory in four months. May my God the restorer bring for you 10 years worth of victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Final prayer. Whoever must send for you in this season, whoever must send for you in this season, men whose heart God has touched. It is dangerous to cry to a man whose heart God has not touched. They will watch your tears and trivialize your pain. But when God touches the heart of men for you, they will be touched with the feelings of your infirmity and they will reach to supply whatever help needed. I pray for you, for your sake, today, for some even before the sun goes down, may the Lord touch the heart of a helper. May the Lord touch the heart of a lifter. May the Lord touch the heart of a connector. May the Lord touch the heart of a man of influence. May the Lord touch the heart of a gatekeeper. For your sake, in the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Wave your hands as an act of faith, an act of thanksgiving. It's my season of restoration. Wave your hands as an offering unto God that I believe by faith that I'll return with my testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord.